I'm just showing off my gold plated Gretsch snare drum. Yes, siree. Let's see. All right, let me get my camera set up here. Yeah, <clears throat> I was just talking to Peter off line a second ago and uh, we were talking about drums, surprisingly, not surprisingly. And uh, it kind of gave me the urge to take this baby off the shelf. I don't know if I've ever showed you guys in a up close personal way, uh, my prize Gretsch, probably 1968, 1969, gold plated, 24 karat gold plated engraved snare drum. Uh, even the wires, I think the wires, no, maybe they're not. But the hoops and the key, the Gretsch snap-in key also gold plated. Yep, pretty sweet. Anyway, welcome, welcome everybody to episode 27, live from my drum room. Today is the first day of spring, very exciting, really exciting here. It's uh, a nice day here in the greater south shore of Boston. And um, today my guest is my good friend, Peter Erskine, who absolutely needs no introduction whatsoever. So I'm not gonna give him one. Um, so happy to have Pete with me. When I first started doing these a year ago, he was one of the first, I forget when it was, but I know I started these around, May, uh, sorry, March of last year. And Peter, I think was maybe in April or May. Um, so it's great to have my buddy Pete back with me. A uh, couple of quick announcements to make. If you've heard the news, if you, in case you missed the news, I should say, I hit 521 YouTube subscribers, which is, according to YouTube, unprecedented. They've never heard of such a thing. They said no one has ever reached that many subscribers, 521. And the, uh, what did I figure, eight years that I've had, nine years that I've had my YouTube account, I've, I've hit 521. So they're, they're pretty amazed that anybody could reach that number in such a short amount of time in nine years. So I'm pretty excited about that. So thanks to everybody who's subscribed. Um, and, you know, people can still, still subscribe. It's still free to subscribe as of right now to my YouTube channel. But if I can find a way to charge, you know that I will, um, in fact, find a way to do that. Um, anyway, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. A um, couple of quick other announcements before I bring Peter on. Uh, so I want to remind everybody that this coming, first of all, thanks for watching today on this Saturday. It's good to see so many folks watching already. Great. Got a nice number there. Um, I want to thank everybody for watching uh, this past Tuesday with my two friends, Myron Grumbacher and Greg Bissonette. That was a blast. <clears throat> if anybody watched uh, yesterday, I was on Ian Palmer's uh, live Facebook show and that was a lot of fun. So if you tuned in for that, Rich, I know you were there, Rich McCarvel. Hey, Kaz, good to see you, man. Kaz Drummer, yeah, Kaz Rodriguez, great drummer, great guy. Uh, so thanks for, if you watched yesterday with uh, Ian Palmer and myself. Um, upcoming this Wednesday, my good friend Jim Catalano, who we all know from Ludwig all those years, will be my guest. Looking forward to having Jim. Next Saturday, um, the 27th of March, it's Andy Newmark. Um, very excited about that. That gets us through this month and looking, looking ahead to April, I have confirmed Saturday, April the 3rd, I have um, Mickey Curry, longtime drummer for Brian Adams. And of course, you know, from everything from Hall and Oates to the Cults to Tom Cochran and, you know, a million other uh, sessions that he's done. But of course, he's been Brian Adams drummer for the last 40 years, basically. Mickey will be my guest on the 3rd of April. And looking ahead, also, Jerry Murata is going to be my guest. We're, we're finalizing a date. And April 17th, just confirmed today, Saturday, April 17th, my dear friend Ash Sohn um, from right over there in London will be joining me just across the pond. So uh, Ash, you know, one of my absolute favorite drummers and people. So I'm excited about that. So probably forgetting things as usual. That's what I wrote down. Um, <clears throat> Pete and I are going to talk about this, but I do want to just mention that um, if you haven't seen this or you don't own it, Musicians Lifeline, a book that Peter Erskine and Dave Black 
authored a couple of years ago now, I guess, but it's a great uh, a book for those of us who will be uh, soon returning to playing gigs. You know, it's, you probably wouldn't have had a lot of use the last year for this book, but um, I think we're all feeling pretty good that we're going to be uh, referring to this soon. Uh, and on that note, I'm, I'm getting my first shot on Monday. I'm very excited. And if it's the Johnson and Johnson, it's going to be my only shot, but um, I'm definitely getting a shot on Monday. So I'm excited about that. Never been so excited about getting my arm jabbed. Um, thanks, Joe Franco. Yeah, it's a good lineup. Yeah, Penny Lane, what do you think? Um, thought I'd give Neil, my buddy, my bandmate, Neil Porter, a little plug for his Facebook show, NTV. And a big thanks to Mike Trickett, Michael Trickett, for uh, sending me this shirt. And if the people at MTV <clears throat> want to sue me for uh, black market bootlegging, um, I'll refer you to Michael Trickett, who made this shirt for me. <laughs> All right. Anyway, it's a pleasure to see everybody. Jim Catalano, I'm really looking forward to Wednesday. Um, thanks for joining today, Jim, and looking forward to Wednesday. Um, but I know today, Jim, you're not here to see me. You're, you're here to see your hero and my hero, Peter Erskine. So without further ado or delay, please welcome my very good friend, Dr. Um himself, Peter Erskine. Hey. Hi, Pete. Hi, oh, John. Yeah. I mean, I was, it's, there's a little time delay. Stop. Stop. Yeah, stop, there, stop, there's, stop. I've, I found that okay, if you're muted. I mute my Facebook. I've got Facebook on so I can see the comments, but I've learned to mute it because it really messes you up. Well, I, you know, and then, of course, according to my kids, I should, I should just unbelievably completely mute it because they're like, Come on, Dad, Instagram, Facebook. But, I, you know, I'm the know. Facebook generation. I like Facebook. I like uh, my friends. I try to avoid any uh, uh, toxic uh, encounters. I don't discuss things pretty much other than music or, uh, you know, sentiments of the heart. Yeah, uh, yeah These days. It's great to see you. You. Uh, great to see yeah, you, you, buddy. You, you know, for all the heartache that the pandemic has wrought, um, and I don't make uh, light of anyone's suffering, but in my own case, uh, you know, we always look for uh, silver linings. It's it's a it's a uh, uh, I think part of our, our human uh, disposition, if not condition. Uh, but I, I, you know, the, this actually has saved my life. I think. Um, with all the travel, uh, yeah. I just had uh, a pretty good number of self-destructive things that, that were kind of uh, compensation uh, sort of devices, uh, overindulging in one thing or another, uh, usually related to food or drink, um, lack of exercise, uh, the occasional uh, cigarette, uh, you know, uh, which I thought mm. was, oh, this is fun. I'm traveling. I, I can be naughty. Um, <laughs> and uh, no, it's not healthy. So uh, uh, not tooting my own weight loss horn, but uh, I'm, I'm at uh, 38 pounds wow. uh, less than where I was. Um, and it feels it feels good. You That's know? so great, Pete. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and I'm grateful. Uh, portion control. Uh, th thanks to my wife, and I still need her keeping an eye on that. Uh, she she went out the other day and and had left a a, a wonderful pot of of uh, uh, vegetable curry. Um, was it vegetable? No, I think there was some ground beef in it. Uh, anyway, uh, she was kind of amazed. Uh, uh, there was a dinner and then a lunch that I uh, after the lunch and and I finished the pot. She uh, this morning, she said, you know, that was that that was that was for six to eight servings. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, left to my own devices, I will still overindulge. But uh, th thanks to 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 being home, not home yeah. alone, but yep. home with her. Uh, it's been great. You know, we got a dog uh, uh, yeah. going for for walks every every morning. Uh, 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 religiously, I get my mile and a half. Now I'm not a runner like you, no, uh, but 
but the you know the good fast walk and i got the apple watch which keeps track yeah. of all the stuff and i love it and That's and so all the stuff just getting to be home and and rediscovering a lot of things in, including some things about myself that needed a uh, little, little bit of attention i guess well you know i i just want to say i i don't know if it was <clears throat> excuse me throat always gets dry down in this room but i don't know if it, when we had that surprise and thank you again for being part of that birthday zoom that my mm. my kids and tracy and everybody uh put together but i it, i it was either where i saw you there or in another might have been on facebook but i immediately noticed that you'd lost a, a considerable amount of weight and how much how great you looked and i was just so happy for you and 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 that you know you it's so hard. I like you say when you when you travel the way you do, to s <laughs> look at that. Yeah, I want to see some bicep shots. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but I but I totally get it. We've talked about this many times that you know when when you and, and I'm certainly aware of how much traveling you were doing before the pandemic, and and it's it's really impossible to to maintain any consistency when you're. When you're, you know, well, have, when you have just, a schedule like that. Just an example. When, when I would be working in, in Cologne uh, with the wonderful uh, uh, WDR, which stands for Westdeutsche Rundfunk, the Western German radio. Uh, they're a big mm -hmm. band there. It's just my favorite big band in the world. They're, they're, they're just wonderful musicians, and I've done over 25 projects there. Uh, but they, they have a great drummer. And so I don't get invited, but for many years, um, they didn't have a, a permanent drummer. It was a rotating cast of guest drummers. Uh, but still, I'd, I, I would be brought over for the occasional thing. And, and the last few years, they settled on uh, the Hilton Hotel down the road. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, great breakfast at the Hilton, you know. Um, fantastic, uh, you know, omelet yeah. bar. And yeah. And so what my wife and I are having for breakfast now, this past year, a small bowl of fresh fruit, a little bit of yogurt that she measures, and, and just a, a little bit of granola and some flax seeds. That was just like, you know, I sat down, I had a coffee, I'd eat one of those, and then it was like, okay, now let's hit the buffet. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and then boom, the plate with it. Yeah, well, yeah guten, uh, guten Tag. Uh, yeah, uh, Entschuldigung, uh, ein Amulet mit, mit uh, you know, uh, alles, uh, you know, everything. And um, so I got this big old omelet, and uh, yeah, I got some uh, baked beans, and no oh, bacon, oh, good, you know, and let's get some <laughs> bread for that. And uh, well, oh, hey, let's get the, have a couple of, uh, you know, cupcakes, because... You know, when you travel, you just, you don't know, uh, I mean, there's no certainty when your next meal might be. So you just, yeah. Uh, over the years, I got, kind of got into this habit of, well, uh, just like, you know, if you have a chance to, to use, use the restroom facilities, you take advantage of that. You have a chance to eat, well, you do that. Um, and then that, that spills over. Do you have a chance, to, opportunity to drink? Well, why not? Jeez, you know, well. Yeah, I, I've earned it uh, or something like that. So uh, being home and 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 operating under this whole different set of uh, daily rules has been great. That's great. And 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 your wife, for anyone who doesn't know, Peter's wife, Mootsie, is is um, the perfect um, guiding everything. light for you. Yeah, everything, everything in every way. And and uh, and I <clears throat> I remember and, and I know. Um, and I had this coming to me, a NAMM show, maybe 10 or more years ago, where we went out one night. I think we ventured over to Disneyland to uh, to one of the restaurants over there, a little off campus. And and we, you know, we got a little out of control, as we sometimes did back then. And, you know, when we were in our 50s, Pete, remember? <laughs> yeah. When we were... <laughs> oh, beautiful. Yeah, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, and, and, so we went to well, a restaurant. Yeah, and then and then the next day, <clears throat> you guys came by the booth, and Mushi uh, <laughs> said to me, in a very nice way, but but a very direct way, she said, "You mustn't indulge Peter all the time when he, you know." I think I think we decided. 
it was that last bottle of wine. She was she was yes. uh, upset because I said let's get one more, and it, and it was too much. We, we it was and it was yeah yeah it was uh, uh, s- indulgent and selfish on my part and greedy and. Um, well, no, I, I I I'm sure I egged you on and egged us all on and 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 you know now honestly like I look back at that or looking back at a situation like that and I think to myself yeah that was really just you know it was unnecessary and no you didn't you know. egg me on let's let's set the record straight all right well, I, you indulged and you accommodated me we were we were basically all done with dinner and I was like well, let's come on let's have one more bottle and so yeah it was dumb. Uh, so, uh, yeah, she's got the, the discipline I need. Here's a, yeah, since I showed yeah. a photo of her, um, here's a photo when we met. This was back in 1978, and wow. she was the interpreter, one of the interpreters on the very first trip uh, or any, any traveling I did with Weather Report, and, of course, that was in Japan. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, we didn't... We didn't uh, become an item of, of any sort until seven years later. And that was when, uh, well, here's a photo of her with Dizzy Gillespie. This was at a jazz festival in 1985. Look at that. That's a nice photo. That's a great photo. Yeah. Um, so one of the things I've been doing during the pandemic has been um, Learning how my scanner works, you know, I, uh, I, I never understood how to scan negatives. Mm. And the, it never came out looking right. And then I finally figured it out. Uh, and I have an Epson, I think it's called the V500 Perfection Scanner. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and then you get these accessories for holding negatives. And with the newer Mac systems, uh, I don't think the Epson software has been updated. Uh, anyway, I, I found something called, I have no pony in this race. I'm just mentioning it as a public mm. service. Uh, it's called Silver Scan. Silver Scan. And, um, and it works really good. And then I'm, I'm uh, I, I have Photoshop, but I really don't understand how to use it. Um, and there's a, a much user friendlier, uh, bit of software called uh i don't know how to pronounce it pixel mature pixel mater uh, m-a-t-o-r um but it's very easy to uh like for example if i if you look on on this scan you you can see the dots and yeah i i never uh i never went in and fixed that so with this it's very easy to repair the image and then do some wow. nice things and it's fun, and and I'm finding in these negatives uh, photos that I either completely forgot about, maybe I'd given the print to the person I had taken the photo of, or th- the developing kiosk or, or Photoshop, uh, in in a, in a sense of a photo shop or store, uh, they didn't develop it because. Uh, uh, sometimes you know you open the uh, back of a camera by mistake, and the, yeah, yep. Uh, so, it was, so there's only yep. like half an image. Um, but meanwhile, there's like this unbelievable photo of Elvin Jones, uh, wow. or Freddie Hubbard, because the negative image. is so, intact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went in, and so when I have spare time, this has become like just such a, a fun thing to do. Uh, and I'm posting on Facebook. I know I should, you know, my my son keeps telling me that <laughs> Instagram is. But the Facebook thing is fun. Yeah. Speaking of which, I think so uh, too. Sorry, you can tell I've 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 had my third cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> can I'm I ask so a dumb to question? See you, you, you know, I'm excited yes. to see you too. I'm going to ask a dumb question. So, you're scanning the. Ne- I, I've never heard of scanning negatives. I just I I I've scanned you know prints. And, and made a JPEG, but so you scan so, the negative? Yeah, and the mistake I made was I thought you could just, you. so they have these uh, these th- little uh, negative hold, negative strip holders. Yeah. And and they come for negative or positive images. They, you, know, you can put a slide in there or you could, or you know, if you have a, whatever, those square photos that, with the, those kind of cameras that, mm-hmm. like a Rolleiflex or something. Yeah. Um, and, 
so I would just I I I would uh, so you put it in the scanner and then you remove the padded top the white top that's on the lid of the scanner and yeah there is a there's another light uh, oh, it's okay. glass and uh, and then that scans uh, when that thing is is removed um, but you you uh, well I so I would scan it and then I would try enlarging that and I think well these don't look very good huh I'm not gonna bother so what you do you do a pre-scan and you just see uh, and it also helps to get a little, I have a little light box and a, and a magnifier mm. so I can yep. kind of get okay. an idea of what, what's there. So then you put the negative in this thing and you, and you dust it and I, I wear gloves. Amazon, I got the white gloves, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you don't get your fingerprint smudges on them. And, uh, and then the pre-scan you see like, all right, in this, in this strip of, of four negatives, um, there's a great shot of John to Christopher. I don't remember that one. Wow. Oh, there's John and Armin. Cool. All right. Then you size the scanning software and you scan that one shot. I see. All okay. Right? And then it's it's a large, good resolution size mm -hmm. photo. And then um, you go in and, and start editing. So... Uh, for example, um, I'm going to I'm going to go to uh, my Facebook page on this. Uh, yeah. Uh, iPad I have attached here and I'll just look for a photo that I posted recently. Um, By the way, while uh, you're doing that, I want to tell you that our friend Joe Testa is watching. Yay, Joe. Two of our of his favorite people. <clears throat> Hi, Joe. AKA the Fonz. Wearing my Vic Firth shirt that he so kindly aided and, and abetted. I'm going to change that, my view here so we're in the That's gallery. a beautiful shirt. I'm going to move you to there. So I'll be right back. All right. So, so, so check, this, uh, check this photo out. Um, I, I never knew I had this. This was on 16 millimeter film. That's the. Uh, it was a little 110 cartridge. You remember those? Yeah, yes. And that's a very small negative. Yep. And that's John McLaughlin with Tony Williams asleep behind him. I was going to say, Tony looks... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> flying from JFK to Havana, Cuba. Wow. I mean, it's wild, right? Yeah, that's... And, uh, and then... Um, let me see. This uh, this will be a photo of my. Okay, well, check this out. Here's I found this, and uh, rip, did a little repair work uh, uh, on the negative. The shot I took of Shelley Mann. I saw that the other day. That's a fabulous shot. It's good, right? And, it's great. And uh, you, I mean, you the, the technique. To say, I just got lucky with the timing. Yeah, but I know. It's because you know, I'm one of the musicians. I could walk around during a uh, Shelley sound check and he was happy. Uh, I, there's another one where he's sticking his tongue out at me, but uh, <laughs> of course, um, let me see if I can find this, this, uh, this one shot. It's, uh, it's fun. And I love your infinity drummer posts too. Oh, where thank you. I'm, yeah. Very uplifting uh, and positive. Well, there, oh, so I'm, uh, oh, you were seeing all that searching. There we go. Yeah, so that that this was a shot I never saw. My dad took it. The back half of my head was uh, was was missing because of of the flare of of it being too close to the ed, edge of the roll of film, you know. Yeah, but it was yeah. fun. Uh, here I am now, folks. And uh, and great that you have all these negatives, Pete. You know, just so great that you you had the foresight to to you know keep them. And you know, there was a time when I I had a whole bunch of negatives that I probably have thrown away over time thinking I'd never need them again but so so check this out you know I have photos from high school or before still um, in 2004 I, I did a lot of touring with Diana Krall mm -hmm. by accident I overwrote on a computer 
my only copy of the entire tour photo documentation. It's gone. That's it. You know, mm -hmm. I lost it all. So, you know, these negatives from uh, 50, 60 years ago, uh, I still have. Uh, yeah. So uh, here's my public service announcement. It's courtesy of uh, an engineer I work with in town here, uh, an amazing engineer named Rich Breen. And Rich told me, if you're not backed up in at least three places, you are not backed up. Mm. So, you know, okay, uh, you have, yeah, you have to do multi, it's not uh, if your hard drive will fail, it's, it's always a matter of when, and it never happens at a good time. Mm. Um, if, if you depend on your computer for work, uh, getting something like carbon copy cloner and creating a, a, a replica of your disk and then you never touch it and and label it and know where that is and then do other backups you can do cloud backups i mean the cloud is is finally almost getting together with apple so that mm -hmm. there's still some some glitches and and some things that that drive me a little bit nuts but it's pretty cool, you know. If 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 I change devices, one one craps out, I get a new one. It's pretty easy to kind of yeah. get myself in <clears throat> running. Um, and so, yeah. So learning about all that crap, and um, and I even um, I'm replacing light switches around the house, and and um, maybe you saw my little uh, mask holder by the door. That uh, yes, uh, I did see that. Yeah. Uh, Getting pretty handy with the varnish, and uh, I know. Um, and I, I, I got a power saw. I'm very careful with it. I was cutting garlic last night, and I'm very careful. I, not with the power saw, though. Not with the power saw. Okay. <laughs> 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 that was that was Jocko's old joke. You, go, <laughs> you know, <laughs> chainsaw for sale. Use just once. <laughs> Call Lefty. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't uh, laugh at that but no you shouldn't but that's you know we <laughs> <laughs> well man you've you've been making good use of this time being home that's great and and uh, and you've still had <clears throat> excuse me still had time to do some teaching and some master classes and and well it's all teaching it's all yeah all teaching all the time um i i, I want to get back to the infinity drummers list in a second but yeah 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 um you know when when the pandemic started john i you know, i had my uh let me see i had my 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 trusty zoom q2n 4k mm -hmm. um and that's with the little microphone barrel attachment you put it in any uh mic holder and um and I had it set up as my uh, video and audio interface versus using the built-in camera and microphone in a, either an iMac screen or, or a laptop lid. Uh, and then I had a long enough uh, USB cable, so if uh, in the middle of the lesson I wanted to show the students something, I could, you know, I had a, I had a mic stand waiting, and I plunk it in that, or I just bring the whole thing over. Uh, set it on a table and then sit down and play. So, you know, that worked. But over the summer, I realized we got to do better. And mm. USC is four miles down the road from Hollywood. And at one of our faculty meetings, I said, if, you know, if it turns out there's some school in, in the Midwest, you know, s some small college in Ohio that that's doing a better job with video and audio than we are, then we, then we can't even justify our existence. Come on. We're, mm -hmm. we're USC, mm -hmm. for goodness sake. So um, I got a little bit of a, a green light to uh, explore a better setup. And so I have uh, I have this uh, A camera uh, setup uh, working, and uh, this enables me, uh, wow. for example, you know, I, I, have, I have one symbol just for the ride. And you can see the kit um i have a true overhead if i want to show something that i'm doing um i have my 
snare drum special. That's the one I've been grabbing. And, um, and I can even mount this camera over here. This is Shure adapter. So I can put that there and really, uh, really highlight yeah. the technique I'm using for brushes. Uh, I can also focus on yep, the bass I was going to ask. Right. And then you were also going to say, hey, Pete, why don't you have a party and invite your pants down to your shoes? Hey, okay. Thank you. <laughs> They're too short. <laughs> That's just what I was going to say. <laughs> I know. I know. Okay. So I've discovered a few things during the pandemic. I'm going to share them now. And again, I, I, there's no... I'm getting, you know, of course I could say you should play Vic Firth drumsticks and you should use uh, I, Remo drum heads and you should I would only agree. play Zildjian cymbals. I have sort of a professional obligation to. But, dude, check out these socks. Love the socks. Love the socks. So um, I, I got hit to these on, uh, watch, you know, watching hulu or some some you know some station um these are called bombas b-o-m-b-a-s and for every pair you buy they donate a, a pair mm -hmm. to someone who's in need of, of clothing and and so my socks and my underwear were always like made of the material that i could get to a hotel first thing i do you know open up the bag put that stuff in the sink boom, 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 wash it with the wrap it up in a towel, try to get the extra moisture out, and just really hope that it's dry uh, by morning, which it usually would be. Um, but that's that synthetic stuff. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been wearing for the last, I don't know how many years. This stuff is like cotton. And, and so I finally said, you know what, I'm going to treat myself. I'm going to get some new underwear. Now, no one may be interested in this, but, <laughs> man, this underwear, it's, it's, I mean, it's really nice. It's really comfortable. And it's great. And I'm like, it's the little things in life. You know, I thought, this is really Absolutely. Nice yeah. underwear yeah. and really nice socks. Um, and then uh, even though it's, uh, my wife hates it when I, when I put on cologne, um, uh, I was listening to a podcast and they talked about, you know, this will come up with a cologne. It's perfect for you. Uh, you just fill out this questionnaire and it's, this, it's called Hawthorne. And uh, the only dragon, they, they keep sending you stuff, but, it's all really good stuff, and I and so even though I'm by myself, I've I've like gotten into, into this thing. I like you know a little spray. Yeah, yeah. And I smell good here in my studio, and and so I you know <laughs> I'm getting off on that. <laughs> <laughs> I can and, I can smell you from here. Thank you. Good. It's nice. I put enough on that you probably can. And <laughs> and you know and I'm in here for several hours a day because I'm teaching. Yeah. And and so. You know, I wanted to find the best microphone that would that I could wear. So if I'm in the middle of teaching and then I turn to another camera, I don't worry about going off mic, right? Yeah. yeah. So I had to get something, and um, and I went to Sweetwater.com. And uh, do you know Nick De Virgilio? Oh, He's sure, yeah, yeah. The product specialist? Yeah. Well, I'm clicking around, and, and, and their website, I mean, it's – the relational database, whatever they got going there, it's really good. So, mm -hmm. drummer, voice mic, whatever. So they had a head. He he did a whole a a b c d e f g like eight or ten mics, um, one after the other, playing the same song, singing the same song, but with different mics. So you could, and, and then you hear it in all the different you know just drums, just mic combinations. You could hear the the amount of rejection. Yeah, yeah. Um, and boom, that great. Clicked on it, ordered it. It um, sounds great. It sounds so good. It's, I mean, it, it, it works okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate the drums if, if you want to hear how those sound. Um, so this has been great for teaching. Then, mm. of course, we discovered well, a little bit of a weak link, gang, because uh, the students are you know either at home with their families or they're sharing an apartment with other people um 
how good is their bandwidth? Uh, you know, somebody streaming movies, or do they have a gamer, or is it just lousy service? Um, or do three of his classmates also have a 10 a.m. class? So the 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 you know the Zoom just and what's their microphone set up like? What's their camera set up like? How can it, you know? So in an effort to even the playing field, I mean, the school provided a lot of equipment to students, which was great because University of Zoom is potentially pretty boring. Uh, yeah, yeah. But the, the students have all been uh, great. The school's been great. Excuse me. Um, at, but now what, 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 what it, this has been uh, several months in the making, uh, but we just got it up and running. Um, and pardon my looking over here. I'm just going to see because I think this should appear in my updated photos. So what I have going now is uh, you'll see my uh, this is Aaron Walk, the engineer that helped me put all this together. Um, uh, let's see. I have to push a couple buttons to make this work. We created lesson pods. So when the county allows students to come back onto campus, they will uh, receive lessons in my studio where we have four cameras set up. We mm -hmm. have the uh, these uh, ATM, uh, ATEM, ATEM switchers. That's how I'm doing all the camera switching. I have two of them. Wow. Uh, kind of piggybacked. Uh, but here you can see uh, we got a large screen monitor. Yeah. And uh, I'm using the Yamaha EAD10 uh, plus a couple of overheads. Um, this is in, in, in another one of the rooms. So uh, this little mixing unit, uh, the camera switcher. And and so the students uh, can. Whoops, that's it. So. Uh, Fabulous. It's great. Yeah, here. here we yeah. Go. And and so I'll be able to, you know, uh, heal down compliance. Hey, can you turn on your foot camera and, and play, you know, page 22 out of the Colin Bailey book? Boom. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, now, of course, you know, in person I could do that, but. In person, what we've been talking about is six feet apart, plexiglass between us, masks. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what I can see with that. Right. With this. This is great. This is. I can, yeah. you know, I can. Uh, and, and I can also show them. So uh, we we and 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 this and the university has a very robust Internet and everything is hardwired. So, um, uh, you know, Good stereo sound, yeah, right. and and it's it's better than in person in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. No, you're it's right. The, it's the best we can do. Yeah. That's, I, and I just want to, I, I <clears throat> before we move off off the subject, Pete, I do want to tell you that I love Bombas socks. Um, oh, you're hip to them. I'm hip to them. I, I own several pair. I kind of, I don't know, last year or the year before, kind of went almost. I'm not wearing them as we speak. I'm wearing some alpaca socks which um, really warm. They're almost like slippers. Oh, nice. Yeah, well, because sure, the house. Massachusetts. Yeah, it's a little chilly. And, and Tracy, my sister-in-law, gave me these, I think. Um, so Al, nice. Alpaca. Alpaca and his all-girl orchestra. That's yeah, Al, exactly. <laughs> and uh, But I, I'm, I'm a Mack Weldon underwear guy. I'll just kind of put that out there. I kind of I kind of got turned on to what those. Kind of, what kind of Mac, underwear? Mack Weldon. M A C K, and then the last word is L W E L D O N. Mac Weldon. Wow. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll check it out if you recommend it. it. But 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 try try the Bombas trunks. I will. I'll try them. Yeah. I'm always you, getting emails you, you, from them. You may not go back. The, the the they feel so. I mean. But let me check them out though. They're no. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. This has to. Okay. Just tell me. Is this is this the first? One of these where you're talk, talking about underwear. Of course. Yes, absolutely. All right. <laughs> it's a first. <laughs> Good. Uh, Great. Oh, 
You know, oh, I, that's, I, a couple scratch of quick, that off my I'll scratch this <laughs> off my bucket list. Excuse me. <laughs> Cross that one up. A couple of quick comments came through. I just want to um, yeah. I just want to mention here. Are you guys uh, for real? <laughs> <laughs> um, someone asked a great question or asked a, a question you've been asked before, no doubt. But um, I, I apologize to the person who asked this that I can't acknowledge your name because I can't find it. But someone asked maybe for you to just talk about what it was like to play with Steely Dan. Um, ah, wanna... well, you know, I, uh, uh, I posted, there's a, uh, there's a video from 1993, uh, uh, the shoreline. I don't know if that's one word or two. I think it's one word shoreline amphitheater, amphitheater. <clears throat> that was, uh, out, outside of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Um, really good show. And, and, you know, they 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 do live video for because these amphitheaters are very large and a lot of people are outside the pavilion. Um, but uh, and usually the quality of those, whenever I've seen these unofficial recordings, are, are not very good. This one is it looks like a TV show. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds good. It looks good. I'm really glad that somebody had the initiative to do it. Um, and it's a it's a really good documentation. Uh, of that band. And, and, and that's another one of the things I've, I've just come across and I want to get my video editing chops together. Now is I've got some home movies, uh, from that tour. Ooh, yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, including, uh, our daughter, Maya, uh, singing, uh, Bodhisattva, just, uh, uh just Bodhisattva and, and, and jumping and running around in the bed. Uh, <laughs> she was, she had a sugar high from the concert. <laughs> uh, afterwards we filmed it because we were kind of uh stunned by how excited she was the the kids liked it and and so i had fun doing it um uh, that was a good band uh, great they band. put together yeah. and i didn't know a lot of the music you know i i uh, you know, i was i was hip to to most of asia uh and gaucho uh i hadn't really paid much attention to steely dan before that time, uh, of course, I became quite familiar because I had to do my homework and and learn the beats. And so I, uh, they sent me two cassettes, I remember, and I transcribed every song's main beat because I didn't want, you know, I was thinking like, all mm -hmm. right, let's do bad sneakers and how's that go? Yeah. So um, I, I I made note of the approximate tempo and and the beat. And wrote it all very carefully in pencil, and then I got to a, a Staples. Um, when I came back from Europe, I think I did a lot of that on the airplane, uh, and uh, photocopied it, reduced it in size, and then um, put it in a, a, a clear plastic laminate. So my, you know, if I spilled my Starbucks latte on it, it wouldn't yeah. destroy it. Uh, and then I had that for reference. Uh, and because I was doing a lot of jazz stuff, um, I, I wasn't a hundred percent confident in my ability to you know hold a tempo. And I kind of uh, calculated correctly that the most crucial moment of that tour for me at any rate would be the first two bars of the first rehearsal. Whatever tempo Fagin counted off, could I own it? Uh, and so for two days, I just, uh, you know, Steely Dan drum beats are, are pretty you know, basic. It's like that's one. The other one is <laughs> you got a couple shuffles, and then you have the uh, Babylon Sisters. That's basically it. Um, so practicing, uh, you know, Babylon Sisters was a little bit. which I learned from watching a Jeff Percaro video where he dissected the, the Purdy Shuffle. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 you might be familiar with that video. Where, I've seen it, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, the instructional value is great. It's hard to watch without getting indigestion because Jeff, Jeff had, I don't know if he, he had eaten to... a burrito before he... Uh... <laughs> right, <laughs> something. He's always God. like... Yeah. You know. uh, but anyway, I, I was able to uh, learn to... Babylon Sisters be thanks to him. Uh, but then I I, I, uh, I got the metronome out and I practiced the beat. Uh, boom, 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 
boom, boom, boom, boom, you know, at 112, and then I practiced at 118, then I practiced at, at 98, and then I practiced at 123, and, and, and tried to find the tempo where, okay, you didn't own that, wrote it down, went back to it. So when, uh, when we had the first rehearsal and Fagan said, all right, let's, let's, let's play such, such and such, he counted it off, boom, I, you know, my confidence was there. Mm. And folks, that's what this is. I mean, it's a, it's a confidence game in, in, the, in, the, in the good sense of the word or, or expression. Um, you know, uh, it's no different from when you would walk into an airplane and you see the captain and you feel like, good, there's someone, there's someone here that knows how to fly this thing. Now I don't have to worry about that. Mm. That's, right? that's, a, that's so, a great analogy, yeah. And yeah. So we, we provide that. And, and I, I did one cheat. I watched Fagan's left hand, so it's like the you know, the drummer with Ray Charles. It was always, you know, drummer, watch my foot. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't watch Ray Charles's foot, you were in trouble. So with Donald, I figured, well, I could, you know, he was playing the roads. He's down in front of me. So I said, I'm just going to watch his left hand. So my bass drum and his left hand lined up for the rest of the tour. Now, I'm not, I'm not making any claims to having yeah. good time or whatever, but because I got his confidence, the rest of the tour was always, hey, band, with the drums. So, you know, that 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 was a relief because I didn't want a whole summer of, yeah, you know, him giving me a, a look or something. Right. That, that, that would just be a drag. Can I ask, how, how close, if you can recall, when, when Donald counted off at that first rehearsal, whatever song, how close was it? So you, in other words, to prepare, you, you learn these songs at different tempos just in case he counted it faster or slower. So how, how close was he to the actual tempo of the record? Was he, was he pretty on the money? With well, for rehearsal purposes, we spent three and a half weeks rehearsing. Uh, I can't remember uh, our starting point. I think a lot of the tempos were faster than the albums. And then we adjusted. Now, I mean, Donald was like, uh, okay, can we try that at like, uh, you know, one one twenty one point five? Or, mm. So he, and he we spoke in terms of like, tempos. no, yeah. yeah, we got to stick to whole numbers. <clears throat> yeah. Because um, <laughs> uh, otherwise you'd have to, you know, the only solution would be uh, you'd have to double that up. So you'd have an eighth note. Yeah. Click it. Uh, so uh, we convinced him to stay with whole numbers. But I've told this story uh we were doing uh, Hey 19. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Hey 19. Now let's let's see if let's see how close I am because that's supposed to be 118. The kids still got it. <laughs> I had no doubt. <laughs> I was a little under. I I. I I haven't had lunch yet, but that's pretty close. Anyway, uh, that 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 wasn't a, a gag or a setup, folks. That's, that's no, no. I, I mean, when we were doing it, we got really good at at, at tempos because that's all we did. We just you yeah, know, I'd never yeah. rehearsed three and a half weeks for anything, and uh, and except and when I was in I'm school. sorry, and and you would you would use the click to to start the song, but you wouldn't you wouldn't be having to you weren't playing to it for the entire no, song no i wasn't playing the cook because i was the only guy uh, so i had a i had a, a tama uh, years before my association with tama i had their large rhythm watch yeah yeah um because that was we determined that was the best one although the the world's greatest metronome that anyone ever made was the yamaha click station mm, and you try to find that. one of those on ebay if you john if you can find a yamaha click station on ebay that works grab it Okay. Yeah. They're, I mean, most of the ones I've seen are really overpriced, very expensive. The great thing about the click station, it had the little mixer and you had all the subdivision, but it had the, what we now know as haptic, you know, the, the it's, I mean, Soundbrenner stuff does this now. They're, they're little wearable metronome, but the Yamaha mm -hmm. had this built in and, and, and so you would just, uh, you'd be working with a singer and uh, that, but you advance to the next tempo and then you could just sit there and push this button and you didn't even have to hit start you just it was set at whatever tempo and as you push the button you got a silent 
pulsation. Yeah. So yeah. I could be looking at at either the uh, you know whether it's the conductor or usually the vocalist. Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And, and now, well, oh, you're such a wonderful audience. And now let's go to Rio. You know, one, two, boom. And I don't have to like, yeah, yeah, try to glom a, a, a tempo off a, a a light that's going back and forth. Yeah, that's hard to do, especially if you're like trying to catch your breath, whatever. So, yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, so the click station w was great, and and now Soundbrenner, you know, they were the first people to really come along, and 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 create a silent pulsating click and and i know a lot of conductors that that love wearing those on their wrists and they get the tempo that way because it's a it's a pretty reliable way to get a tempo i, I like anyway. that i yeah that, that's a i, I use this my, app on my to, phone <clears throat> yeah Sorry, yeah and there are a lot of good polynome is, is good a lot of good uh, different kind of metronomes but this this is the new uh, rhythm watch it's a little tama guy and it's great it's small Reliable speaker, simple, boom. Mm -hmm. So, I was. What was I watching? Some. Tech, I told my wife. I said, "You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not dumb, but I'm so scatterbrained when I talk, and I listen to some of these TED Talk people when I'm, you know, when I'm walking the dog. I said, these guys are smart, or you know, these women are smart. I mean, they know how to. They get on a topic, and you can understand what the hell they're talking about." I, you know, the older I get, the more I'm starting to sound like Freddy Gruber. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of these things is there, it's, it, it can be whatever you want it to be. So it's, well, thanks. it's, it's uh, all. And, and I say that with a lot of love for Freddie, yeah, but boy, was he hard to follow. He was. He was. Uh, right. By the way, Dave Maddox is saying he has a click station. So um, you do. I know where, I know where he lives. <laughs> uh, a happy belated birthday wishes to Dave. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Pete, while, while you're saying, while we're wishing Dave Maddox a happy belated birthday, I meant to say yeah. this during my intro. I must not have written it down, but I want everybody to know if you don't know, and I know you'll want to know this, Peter. Today, Joe Collado celebrates his 100th birthday. You might have seen oh my this God. on, really? on uh, Facebook. Yeah. Joe, he's still alive. God oh, bless him. Wonderful. He still is. Yeah. Joe Collado. And for anyone oh. who doesn't no, Joe is the founder and the owner of Collado Regal Tip Drumsticks, the inventor of the nylon tip drumstick. If you play a nylon tip of any company, you can thank Joe Collado. He was the man that, that indeed, pioneered that. Indeed. Yeah, so he's he's to drumsticks what Remo is to drumheads. I mean, you know, it's... Uh, it was, man, in the 60s, you know, we're listening to, to, uh, to all these recordings with Grady Tate and no matter what kind of symbol you had, if you got a pair of regal tips, that got you pretty close. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, that, now I, I kind of feel like I'm sounding like the record. Um, and yeah, the Jay Cannon model. That was, Jay, that, I, was yeah. that was my go-to stick for you for a long time. The Jay Cannon regal tip. Yep. Yep. Jay Cannon had a great line yeah. because uh, 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 it's timely because we're in the middle of March. Uh, he was walking by the Brecker brothers while they were doing a sound check. This was in Nice, France. And he looked up with all the sound equipment and stuff. And he says, good Lord. He goes, that band has more mics than a Irish bar on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He had a million of them. He did. Let me get back oh. to my Steely Dan story. That yes, yes, please. Yeah. So, so we're doing Hey 19 and boom, bop, boop, boop, bop, boop, boop, bop, boop. All right. That was the tempo we'd settled on. I remember we were in Cincinnati. And I felt the horns were pushing a little bit. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to change it to 119. So I told Gary Grimm, who was the drum tech, and he was the yes. guy that he would dial up the next. And I don't, I don't. I don't know if we kept the songs in a chain because the set would change. So we found it easier just to manually dial. So mm -hmm. Gary would, we'd start the tune, you know, and I, I was responsible for the count off. So I'm doing this whole big, you know, that, that whole thing. Yeah. Um, and once we started, then Gary would reach up and he would, uh, he, he would, he would set the tempo for the next tune. 
So I told him, I said, you know, for Hay 19, set it to, to 119. You know, and I'm, I'm not asking Donald Fagan or Walter Becker for permission. I just thought it'd be a good idea. So here's 118. Here's 119. Pretty close. Pretty close. So um, <clears throat> I count off the tune. We do it. The next day at Soundcheck, we're in St. Louis. And the band gets the sound, and then Donald and Walter walk out, and uh, they go, hey, everybody, good afternoon. And they go, let's do a, let's run Hey 19. And then they both turn, and Donald looks at me and goes, yeah, you know, uh, felt kind of fast last night. <laughs> so I was like, wow, that's, that's incredible you noticed. He goes, well, did you do anything different? I said, well, yeah, I changed it from 118 to 119. But that's, that's fantastic that you noticed. And, and he kind of half turning away, he went, he went, yeah, yeah. He said, don't do that again. <laughs> when you're I working just, with I, a singer, I mean, yeah. a one BPM is a huge difference. It is. And I've heard this story and I just, it just, it's a, it's a great story and it makes me laugh. It's just. <laughs> What's well, true. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and so they weren't, they weren't at all persnickety mm. um, about uh, beats. In fact, I mean, they got annoyed with me because I, I was, I treated the beats as somewhat sacred. Yeah. I Sorry. Know. But you know, if there's a Jeff Percaro beat on this tune, I'm not going to mess with it. You know, that he found the perfect solution. So I, I saw it as my job to do that. And in part, that was not just for musical reasons, but I would look out in the audience, John. And, you know, I realized, I said, I said, these people aren't here. They're 20 years ago and they're in the, they're in the backseat of a car. They're in a basement. They're in a dorm room. They're reliving mm -hmm. This, these really great memories and they're having yeah. fun and so yeah you know it's a live show whatever but but like Fagan was like uh, one night he's I, I mentioned something about a Bernard beat and he got very upset with me like no can you play your own thing mm. which I didn't it wasn't that I didn't have imagination I just felt like these beats are, are great um, the note lengths, the, uh, you know, the chords, everything. So we, w a few of us were really approaching it that way, which is whatever it is. That, that's what it was. Yeah. And, and there were some tunes that, that seemed like, okay, you know, we can, we can open up. Um, I mean, one, one day Donald at rehearsal looked at me and said, can you, can you try approaching this more like you're Tony Williams and you just drop some acid? I remember this. Yeah. Yeah. And I, <clears throat> and I said, no, and and Keith Carlock has that ability, you know, and and still he keeps it, you know, where it needs to be. So I of all the drummers, uh, and there have been some great ones, you know, Dennis, Ricky Lawson, but Keith I think has the best temperament in terms of his approach for what Fagan wanted. Mm -hmm. I you know I wasn't Fagan's choice. I don't think I was Walter's choice, and I think. Part of the reason I I, uh, I had to make the hasty exit, um, uh, I, there, I sensed there might have been a little bit of a power struggle going oh. on, and, and Donald wanted his turn to, 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 to pick a different drummer. Uh, and Dennis did an amazing job, and uh, being able to share any gig with Dennis Chambers, uh, nothing to be ashamed of. It's a point of pride. But Dennis was very gracious. I mean, he, he, cont he called me up. He said, man, I just listened to the, the dat tape of this. He said, I'm just trying to figure out what you did wrong. He said, it all sounds great to me. And I said, well, that's very nice. Thanks, you know. Um, but I, I think I did tell him, don't, don't change the tempo of Hey 19. <laughs> if I can give you one bit of advice, Dennis. Yeah. If I can give you no, one, I, one. I think uh, we all thought that, Pete. You know? it was, I, I mean, no, I, it was good. Yeah. It was good, but I, it wasn't the uh, definitive. It's just, I, you know, I approached it. 
so in, in such a Catholic manner that I th- I think I think Donald maybe felt he was getting a little bit less of what he hoped for, but I think Walter liked it a lot, and 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 when it came down, to, I mean that was the guy I I wanted to please because I I had a working relationship with Walter. We had, we had, we had, he had functioned as a producer on several albums. Mm-hmm. Now here's here's a funny story. Um, many of you know I have a, a, a kind of a lifelong love and and a bit of an association with classical music. A lot of my training was there. Uh, we're doing a, a two day recording project at the, it was uh, Signet Sound. That, that, that was the old Motown West, and um, Walter's producing. Uh, my parents uh, were in town coincidentally. And the, uh, the the session was booked uh, uh, 10 to 5. It was two double sessions. Mm-hmm. So it's 10 to 1, one hour lunch break, 2 to 5. Uh, and, you know, so that means you you got to work fairly quick. But it, that's that's that was a typical jazz album schedule. So uh, first day, uh, it's taking a while to get a to get a good first tune done and and we've eventually do and then I think it, it's lunchtime and the lunch has a very relaxed pace and I went up to Walter I said uh, Walter do you think we should maybe you know get back to work he goes yeah but we're you know it's fine we got I said, I just wanted to make sure you understood that at 5 o'clock tomorrow, I'm leaving. I've, I've bought tickets for the Los Angeles Philharmonic. They're doing the Corn Gold Violin Concerto. Um, I got, I got, I think it was like front or uh, first or second row. Yeah. You know, seats. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to meet my parents there, but I have every intention of going to that concert. He said, what if we're not done? I said, I'm ready to go. If, if we're not done, it's not, it's not, my, uh, uh, <laughs> not my fault or not my problem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, he, and, he, and he just looked at me like he just couldn't believe it. I said, sorry, let's, let's play. So we got it done. And, but I figured, oh, that's it. Walter will yeah. never, ever call me. And... Uh, the 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 moral of the story, gang. Um, something my teacher taught me or told me. He tried to teach me, but you're too young to understand this shit. But he told me uh, I was in college. He said, "Remember to always have the courage to say no." And I think he regretted he didn't, because oh well, that that's. Uh, this guy called me for a gig, and and um, that might lead to some other gig, and I can't turn it down. And even though our, you know, the family was going to go out of town for the weekend, yeah, um, he's and and he regretted that. And and too many times I didn't say no, you know. And Hollywood is the kind of town. What's really interesting: the power of no out here is is quite interesting. Um, when I've said no, more often than not. Uh, not only will they come back, they it seems like they come back uh, even more appreciative. Um, yeah, yeah. That's, I, maybe that's a human <clears throat> psychology. I think it could be. Yeah, and I think I think the fact that there's a, a respect there that um, not that you didn't have that anyway, but the fact that you, you basically said, you know, I I have this other priority and I'm going to honor it, or I have this other commitment and I'm, you know. I think people respect that. I want to. I want to think that they always have and they always will. You know, look at someone and and say, you know, wh- whether it's even in their in their subconscious, maybe even too. You know what I mean? Like you say, yeah. they come back the next time, like in the case of Walter and and Walter Becker saying, you know, yeah, I, I, I was surprised. With, yeah, that's that's a that's a great story. Yeah, the the power of no, and and I've seen it uh, play out with with other folks. Uh, and they're not they're not being a, a contrarians. They're not saying no just to ruin your day. It's just there's a reason sometimes you, yeah. you can't say yes. Yeah. Uh, and it's okay, you know. And and uh 
a good friend of mine uh, said, hey, we're doing this thing. All these drummers are, you know, one of those typical, you know, beginning of pandemic. Do you yeah. want to add your part? I said, thanks. Uh, no, uh, I'm not the right guy for this tune. I don't even know the song. It sounds like it's well known. But uh, I, I just I think I'm going to say no. Uh, hey, no problem. You know, and, and I was glad that the guy, you know, his nose didn't get. Yeah. Yeah. Knocked out a joint because I, I said no. Um, but I, you know, that was a con. I just said, I don't want to do that shit anymore. I don't want to be part of the, you know, 16 frame drummer playing whatever. Yeah. Um, totally. I just like this. Yeah. It's just, I, just the two of us, John. I like I'd lo I love, me too. <laughs> me too. And, and, and I'll, I'll say thanks again for, for taking the time to do this. Uh, I'm going to say this. pleasure. Are, are there any um, any comments? Lots of comments. Um, uh oh. Let's no all all, all very good stuff. Um, let's see. De Carlo is asking. Oh no, he's talking to someone else. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I. <laughs> I'm just, I want to find. I did pin a couple of comments. Um, oh, Dave Maddox, our friend Dave Maddox. Peter, would you talk? Would you would love to t to talk to you a bit about your trio recording? for your ECM with John Taylor. Oh, yeah, John was wonderful. Yeah. Um, basically, the ECM recordings, uh, John Taylor was a British pianist uh, known uh, in great measure for his work with uh, Kenny Wheeler. And he played in a trio with Kenny and Norma Winston. Uh, it was uh, known as Azimuth. And um, I remember uh, the John Abercrombie trio with John, myself, mm -hmm. and Mark Johnson um, at the Fat Tuesdays Club in New York. We 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 shared a week with them, so we got to hear them play a couple, two or three times a night. Uh, and his rhythmic uh, inventiveness and and prowess was uh, it was a mind blower. I was just like, boy, I would love to play with this guy someday. Um, and so it was very much not in the in the Bill Evans mold. It was a, a very physical kind of rhythmic thing. Although John, it turned out, uh, was a big fan and aficionado uh, uh, and lover of of the music of Bill Evans. So our trio eventually went there. Um, the bass player Pally Danielson, uh, many of you might have known his work with Keith Jarrett's so-called European Quartet, um, and uh, and so it just seemed like a, a it would be a good combination, and we uh, ended up the first time we really well. We 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 did a little bit of touring with Kenny Wheeler's quintet, and we would do one trio tune each night. But the first time we actually played kind of as a trio was was in the recording studios, uh, known as Rainbow Studios, which were in Oslo, Norway. So you're you're very far north and you're not near anything. Um, you're there for one purpose, to, to make music. Um, the studio uh, was one large room. They did have a couple of small, like isolation rooms with sliding glass doors, but we didn't use those. We're all in the room. Uh, the piano's wide open, no blanket on it or anything. Um, and so, of course, the piano and bass microphones will hear the drums if the drums get too loud so you have to kind mm -hmm. of really adjust your touch and what we heard in our headphones sounded like the record um so it affects your touch it affects the, the note density um and you have the uh you know it's winter there for at least half the year so you have that beautiful winter daylight coming in these very large windows it used to be a, a movie theater a, a, a cinema so you, you can imagine the size of the room very large room mm. Mm -hmm. um, light, like baby blue walls. I mean, it was, it was, it was mm. just a, a wonderful, and wood, you know, Scandinavians and wood, they, yeah. Scandinavia is great. I mean, uh, you know, I, I like Sicily as much as, 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 as the <laughs> next guy and it's soulful and it's great, but you know, the nice thing about Scandinavia, you know, everything works up there. Right. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, yeah. he's just like, he's like, oh, great. Nice. Okay. Um, <laughs> so it, it, was, it was just a, a, this rarefied place to make music. 
and uh, what a treat. And and usually by the the middle of the second day, you'd be done with all the tracking and start mixing. So uh, the trio albums were fun. I did one album for Manfred Eicher uh, with Gary Peacock, and we had just finished a couple days in the studio with the band Bass Desires. And, and that was John Schofield, Bill Frizzell, Mark Johnson, myself. And we'd been touring. We're very comfortable with each other musically, personally. Making the album was just a hoot. It was fun. Um, I stayed an additional couple of days to work with Gary Peacock, uh, along with Jan Garberek on saxophone and Pally Mikkelborg, a wonderful Danish trumpeter. And, uh, and all of a sudden I felt, whoa, where are all my buddies, you know? And, uh, God, now I have to kind of sound like Jorn Christensen or Jack D. Jeanette. And <laughs> so we do the first take and I, I go in to listen to the playback and the drumming sounds just horrendous. It's really awful. Uh, there's no center to to anything I'm doing. I can hear that I'm trying to... I can't play like Jack D. Nobody can play like Jack D. Jeanette. Well. Um, <laughs> that's what's so incredible about Jack D. Jeanette, number one. Um, because he's just so endlessly inventive. But, to, you know, I hadn't even studied Jack's drumming, but all of a sudden I felt like... It, so it was like nothing to to anybody, my drumming. And I'm very self-conscious. And, and Manfred, who could be a very ball buster of, of, a, of a producer. Um, that's not language he would appreciate, but <laughs> we're a bunch of drummers here. so you know. That's right. Yeah. Um, uh, he, friends. Yeah, friends. Tough guy. And uh, doesn't mince words. He comes over to me and, and he kind of just gives me a little pat on the back. He says, it's going to be okay. He says, he said, just listen. He said, you're not listening. I can tell you're not listening. Just just listen. Everything will be fine. Which is, you know, the most profoundly great advice you could give anybody. Yeah. So I took the pressure off myself of trying to be something I wasn't. And I just listened. And all of a sudden, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, and... Maybe that would, you know, it's funny. We we're talking about Jeff Percaro. Um And Jeff holds a special place in all our hearts. Uh, number one, because he was, he was a drumming legend. Number two, he was just such a beautiful human being. And, and we lost him way too young, which, which makes it all the more uh, poignant of, 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 of a sauce, you know, for us to kind of savor i mean it, it, you know there, it's a very heady brew i'm sorry to put this on gastronomic terms but uh you know uh, it, it's it's just a very potent blend of things when when you, when you think of jeff mm -hmm. um yeah. i think i felt a responsibility to try to play his beats i did it in steely dan and then two years later i'm working with boz skaggs and that's that's almost all jeff Right. And the great rock percussionist, Lenny Castro, mm -hmm. was playing. And Lenny's you know, he's being encouraging, being good. Now I've, I've, and I've and some of the other musicians in Boz's band, I didn't, I'm meeting all of them for the first time. All, they're all great. I'm the, definitely the guest. But uh, for, uh, I think Boz had the same management as Steely Dan, so I, I think he had come and seen a show or something. Anyway. I think you're right about that, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm playing, the, and he's a, uh, Boz is an unbelievably great human being. I really, it was just a short tour, but I had so much admiration for him, just seeing him uh, work not only as an artist, but just as a person. I, I really like him. And uh, I'm doing a, a, a pretty serviceably good imitation of Jeff. I'm, I have no doubt, yeah. And, you know, what's that? But one night, I played something... I can I can lay claim to this. I played something for the same reason Jeff would have played it there. And I and I noticed it. And I heard a ah and I look over and Lenny's playing and he smiled and he yelled during the tune, he goes, Now you're starting to get it. 
Oh man. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, <laughs> thanks. You know, cause I just spending enough time there. I was, ah, so he, I think, you know, he sensed immediately, maybe everyone did that. It went from imitative to inventive um, to organic. Yeah. Yeah. Or something. Uh, and that's not easy. And I don't like, if I knew how to bottle it, I would, um, uh, it was a fleeting moment. Um, but maybe Jeff was like, all right, I'll, I'll give you a couple seconds of what it really feels like. Wow. Well, you know. that's, but it was fun. That's very generous, too. And I, I think if I can say, you know, I, I, for anyone to walk into a situation like that, like you say, where it's, <clears throat> you know, Jeff had created those those like iconic beats with Boz Skaggs and and so many with Steely Dan. And, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I think anyone would would want to in their own way, preserve that and, and, you know, and, and say, it's, I think we'd all agree they're perfection. So why change it? You know? And, um, yeah. So, uh, my, yeah, so it's understandable. You came in with that perspective and uh, it's really cool though, that you felt something at that moment. And yeah, it just, it yeah. just, had, it was just a brief, yeah. brief moment, but uh, you know, we all, we, we have brief moments. I, I, I've talked about another brief moment on occasion um this was uh that sounds like i'm name dropping i don't mean to but i was touring with joni mitchell and we were doing uh, a series of concerts uh rhythm section was chuck berghoffer and myself uh the pianist would would normally uh, they'd, they'd hire a local pianist because it was all written stuff but for a few of the concerts uh instead of it being a sax solo they would have uh, herbie hancock herbie was brought in as a guest artist uh, at a few uh, uh, concerts in a, f a few different cities. And, and so here we are in, in New York, and we're playing, um, it used to be called the Felt Forum. It's a smaller venue within Madison Square Garden. It's not the big, not where the hockey games or basketball games are played. Mm. It's like the basement or something. But it's a nice, good size room. So uh, I had a lot of people there, and... Uh, they're like, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, put your hands together for Herbie Hancock. So Chuck and I start this. A vamp, right? And we're playing along, and 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 and, and Herbie waves. I switched cameras too soon. He kind of waves. Eh. And, 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 and as soon as he, his butt hits the piano bench, he plays... Two chords, like one, two, three, four, beep, bop. All right? Yeah. So check this out. So I'm going, mm, 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 beep, bop. And I swear to goodness, John, it was like, it was like some kung fu shit. Oh, man. <laughs> I felt, I felt my, I felt it just like, whoop. Yeah. The time. He projected such a specifically strong rhythm, yeah, and rhythmic feel that it just locked. I and and that was a palpable. Yeah, it was. It was like it was like uh, you know in kung fu. He, you know when when you see those movies, they're gonna go woo. You know they do yeah. that, and then the yeah. guy goes flying across the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that same kind which, of thing, which like, I had yeah. happen to me one time. Um, there's an engineer uh, who was a black belt in Kung Fu. And, and I was you saying, really hey, had it happen to you. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I said, hey, what's that? Come on. What? You know, uh, no, no. I said, don't show me. So I, let's, I mean, slow motion. You know, okay, slow motion. But let's pretend I'm some asshole. And I come at you with a beer bottle. And and then the next thing I know, I'm I like, you know, I got my head. Of a, uh, <laughs> and he said, are you okay? I said, yeah. I said, what's this happened? He goes, that was slow, but he said, you know, the goal is you, you don't want to, you don't ever want it to go that far. Right. And I said, okay. So I keep pestering him. I haven't learned my <laughs> lesson. And he, he mentioned one time in a bar, the only time he ever had to use it was a guy was threatening him and he, he did this thing and he kind of plants his feet and the guy felt the key, the, the energy, he said. And, the, and, and he said, the guy like realized, wow. whoa. Some other thing. So I'm like, you got to show me. He said, no, I don't want to show you. I said, come on, you got to show me. Like, just, just like a little bit. And, um, and you guys catch me if any you know, kind of thing. 
and I don't know if the power suggestion, but he's boom. He does this thing, John. I go, my ass goes flying across the room. No kidding. It was weird. Yeah. And it, he never touched you, but it was just he the, never touched the energy. Me. Just the he never touched me. So wow. there's something out there, and Herbie Hancock's got the kung fu shit on the yeah. piano. Now I d- I did this thing there called the Stick People yeah. with 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 Lenny uh, Lenny White. Have you seen this? Michael Shreve, Lenny White, uh, Greg Errico, David Garibaldi, and Mike Clark. Yes. Um, yes. And and we had a Zoom. I thought we were just hanging out. I didn't realize it was. They were going to post it, but I'm glad they did. We had a good talk, and and we, we talked about that. And Lenny had some very interesting, like theories, of what was happening, with Herbie. Uh, of course, he's played with Herbie a lot, and of course, yeah. with Mike. Um, but that that was a lot of fun. That's very cool. That's a very cool story. Um, I'm going to ask a question on behalf of Anthony Cucina. Um, and Anthony, I know I, I, I'm one of these days. I think it's Cucina or Cucina. It's one of those. It's one of those two. Um, Peter, what is your procedure when dealing with potential clients and receiving and sending data for songs? Are you asking? Is he asking as a drummer or as a, as a? I think as a drummer, if someone wants you to play uh, a, a song, for, you know, on a record, like I'll tell you exactly what it is. Um, I I always thank them for their interest. I ask them if I'm not familiar with their work to send me, uh, you know, either a copy of the song or a copy of their work that's representative of what I'll be doing. Um, and as I explained it, I say, I want to be confident that I'm, I'm going to be the right person to, 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 to add drums to this recording. Um, and if I feel that it's just musically not compatible, uh, I'll just say, I, you know, I'm really not the right person for this. I'm not comfortable playing this. And, uh, you know, I'm my own manager for that kind of stuff. So usually, uh, you know, the, the, the price may vary a bit depending on the complexity of the thing. But generally, I try to offer a reasonably friendly price, uh, but for reasonable expectations. Mm-hmm. So uh, they send the stuff. I, uh, I say, uh, you need to be available. If you want to have any feedback on this, this is when I can do it with the engineer. We will send you a, a, a rough mix of whatever source track you sent and my drums and MP3. And, um, you know, let us know. If, 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 if I feel that's the take, I may tell you, wow, I think I got it. Or yeah. what notes? You give notes. I said you get one more take. And I'll, uh, you know, I, uh, it's not missed warts and all. It's I, I when I say one more take, it's going to be, you know, the best drum take I can do. But, um, you know, it's not like well, you know, that one fill and uh, uh, two before letter D. You want you hit the time uh, like no, there, there are no redos on that stuff. Yeah. So it's just to let them know, yeah. Um, yeah. you, I'm an improvising drummer. You know the way I play. That's why you contacted me, and. You know, one guy. One guy said, "Wow, the, uh, that uh, those drum fills are are spacey." And I wrote back, "The part says play spacey drum fills." I said, "Be careful what you wish for." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's it's key that, as you say too, you 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 hope that they're familiar with your playing up front, so that their 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 expectations are already there in terms of what you know, what they anticipate they're going to get, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, I, obviously, it's a, a, you know, oh, you know, wow, brushes. I thought you're going to do sticks. Oh, you want stick or whatever. But mm. I try to get that sorted out. And, and that's what the first pass is for. A lot of stuff. If I'm working on a film, uh, you know, with this home recording, it's, we, we, there are, you know, 20 musicians or more simultaneously tracking at home. It doesn't go round robin all the time. Yeah. Some things will be let's get the drums on first, and then we'll add. But a lot of times it's just there's your the engineers getting it all in, and by that evening he or she is mixing it. So um, they kind of trust you to be your own producer on it. Um, but I'll always say, is you know, do, do you have any notes for me, or, or is that the direction? Now I am doing a session next week where the artist will be 
uh, Zoom present. Yeah. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. I normally, uh, you know, I, I kind of prefer just let me concentrate. I'll work on it. We'll send it to you. Give me your notes. I'll make the, the adjustments. And then um, depending on how much music we have to do. Uh, yeah. I mean, my favorite clients, not because I'm lazy, but are generally the ones that, great, thank you. I mean, yeah. when I hire somebody and I know who I'm hiring, nine times out of 10, my reaction is, wow, that's great. We're done. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Whatever choices they may have made, because that's why I called them in the first place. So they would make choices, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so the, yeah. the to, yeah. to micromanage or control freak, uh, those elements and it, and it's tough. I mean, I, I have had to tell clients, um, I said, I just want to make sure you're not married to the demo because this electronic drum track, what I'm going to do will sound nothing like that. And if you're expecting that, then let's not do this. Yeah. Um, and one time I, I, I did a, I did a track for a guy, really nice music. And, um, he, he didn't like it. So I, I, and I was building the track. I was really excited about it. It was like, you know, mm. building a layer. I did a brush layer and then I'm building the thing. And he goes, well, no, I, you, I don't, you, you did a, you did a fill. And I said, you know what? This, this was a mistake. You don't owe me any money. I'll pay for the engineer. Thanks. It's been fun. No, but I said, no, you don't get the track. Mm. So now I got this really good drum track. I got to write a tune around it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it was just a miscommunic a, a miscommunication? Yeah, and, I, and, but yeah, I just was, and I should have been a better sport. Said, all right, I'll. But I was like, you know, if you don't like it, that's why. That's why it's Pro Tools. When you're mixing, just take those yeah. two bars and whatever you want. I'm giving right. you everything you you want. He goes, well, no, then that means I have to get an engineer to do that. I want it. He wanted the perfect drum track from me, and yet I can't read his mind. Yeah, he wanted something finished like that. Yeah, I, but I would have him. to. Yeah, but those I'm are just, probably few and far between, right? Those situations. It's. I would bet that when when people come to you, they know what they're they're going to get, and it's. You know. I'm. You know. I, I mean, I, 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 there are all the stories we used to hear about Phil Woods. Um, you know, when when um, I think it was. Uh, I don't know if it was Steely Dan. I mean, I know he did the. Uh, uh, the Billy Joel, uh, uh, da, 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 just the, I love you just the way you are. Do 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 do. It was an amazing record, but I think he just did one take on that, and and they might have been like licking their chops, like oh good, now we can. Um, uh, no, he was packing up his horn already, and I, and I saw Herbie Hancock. To bring him up again it was an album for michelle colombier and they played him a little bit they got the sound the uh, he was just using the speakers in the control room he had his little mini moog uh and he turned now, this was this was the days of tape but you know yeah be, well, that was great let's punch in right before the bridge and can you give me a little more he turned to the engineer or the the, the guy the assistant running the tape he said uh I'm going to give you two takes on this. Be sure you record both of them. And that was his announcement to the room. There's not yeah. going to be any punching in and no second guessing. And, of course, the first take was great. I don't even know if he did a second one. They were just yeah. like, yeah, fantastic. But he let everybody know. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, of course, when you're Herbie Hancock, you know, you can do that. I, you know, it reminds Hal Blaine used to tell this story about when he worked with Frank Sinatra <clears throat> and Frank would come in and in the old, you know, wrecking crew days and say, OK, band, I'm only going to sing this once, you know, <laughs> so and, you know, Hal used to say, you know, you know, and they were all a bunch of funny, you know, screwball kind of guys who played their asses off the wrecking crew. But he said, you know, he'd say, we, you know, we were all on our best behavior when when the chairman was in the room because there was no messing around, he, you know, no. And everybody would, 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 would be at, at the top of their game for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I love that stuff. I, I always loved 
direct to stereo recording just because of the heightened awareness that everyone needs to have. You know, yeah. you, you, there's no fixing. Right. And and there's just a thing. And, and if we listen back to some of our favorite records, why are they favorites? Because that's how they did them. They went in, they boom. Um, and a lot of stuff that I remember when I was younger, like, oh, I wish I'd gotten another take or, you know, it, it's what it is. And, and, and oftentimes it doesn't sound as bad as you remember. But I mean, that's that's mm -hmm. the correlation of the older I get, the better I was. <laughs> uh, I love that. I can use that now, too. <laughs> well, Pete, we've, we've hit the. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah. I know we've hit the. So no, the okay. Infinity Drummers list, I just wanted to talk about that, explain it. Yes, uh, absolutely, as long as you want. So um, the wonderful Antonio Sanchez mm -hmm. uh, nominated, said, I nominate Peter Erskine for, you know, there's 10 drum tracks or whatever. So I do the 10 drum tracks, and I'm like, this is not enough. So I said, you know what, I'm going to, I nominate myself, I'm going to do 50. <laughs> And I'm about three or four days into it. I went, 50 is not going to be enough. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to make the spreadsheet. And I, so I, I make an announcement. No, excuse me. 100. 100. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then I said, that's not enough. So I, I, I just came out of infinity, which, which, you know, the, you know, I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, but what am yeah. I? I know you are, but what am I? Infinity. <laughs> infinity. You know, right? So it's a yeah. Pee Wee Herman thing. So I just go infinity drummers. And um, our good buddy Scott Goodman calls me up. Scott Goodman's the, the, the president of, of Zoom North America, also a drummer um, and big music guy. industry giant and, and great yeah. guy. And, and Scott says, he goes, Pete, this this infinity drummers list thing. He goes, you, you own this now. This is like, great. I said, well, it's, you know, it's a vanity nice. thing in that I like playing DJ, but um, I really just want to highlight the, the, the ultimate goal is that everyone realizes not only is there so much great music out there, but it's being made by all the you's and me's and everyone. It's not the, the, the top 20 ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. legendary drummers that none of us could hope to be. Yeah. These are everyday musicians, right place, right time, playing the right beat. Perfect. Yeah. And so the good folks at Modern Drummer um want to collaborate. We're going to make an ebook out of this and and it's going to be pretty great. Uh, I hope they don't mind my letting this cat out of the bag. Um you know, there's Exciting. no copyright issues because everything has been cleared on YouTube. There are dynamic links. I'm, I can now add additional listening links. I'm going to work on the text. But Modern Drummer has all the photos of just about every drummer. Yeah, yeah, the right. wow. So it's, it's, so it's going to be very special and a great resource for fun, for study, educationally. Um, I'm really excited about that. So that's that's the next project I'm going to be working on but the other collaboration of note like you s said earlier i did catch that the musician's lifeline with dave black i sent out seven questions to 250 colleagues friends heroes we got 165 responses which is pretty good um from the greatest musicians uh, you know some of it does have to do with travel and the kind of performing advice that only has relevance to when we're not all in lockdown but a lot of other things in here that, uh, I'll, 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 okay, one give, I'll, I'll give away one of the uh, results. One of the questions was, is there anything you, you, you know, what's the one thing you would do differently in your education or your career? Um, and the overwhelming response was, I would have studied piano more, more seriously. But socks. <laughs> Try the underwear. Mac, Mac Weldon, Bombus underwear, and yeah. Max Weld, Mac Weldon, like a truck? Ma Mac? Mac Weldon, yeah. Mac Weldon. Mac Weldon. No, um, you can say anything you want. I'm just looking to see no. if. Um, 
Larry Finn is watching. Larry Larry teaches at Berkeley. I think you know Larry. Hey, Larry. Um, what a what a great school. That uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I've been working a lot more uh, lately with uh, you know Steve Bailey and Victor Wooten. Um, hey, you know what, Victor? Uh, I turned them on to this ATEM video switching thing, but then Victor really went down the rabbit hole and he's become an expert. Mm. And so he taught me. And I said to my wife afterwards, I said, yeah, this guy is a great teacher. His patience, his, I said, I was amazed. I said, it's, and it's fun, even, you know, if you're 66 years old to receive instruction. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's, learning is the best thing in the world. And uh, we get it wherever we can find it. That's uh, my, my daughter for, for uh, Christmas. She, um, she got me a subscription to, I think it's called Master. What is it? Master class. Oh, yeah. Master. Yeah. Master class. That's great yeah, master stuff. Class. So working on my, uh, my kitchen, uh, my yeah. life technique a little bit. And you, you can, that you can, there's so many. Yeah. The dog menu training. Is, we're doing, yeah. we're doing dog training. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of things I didn't know. Um, they're good. The, uh, the, my one criticism is that each one starts with this kind of cinematic overview. And as you're changing topics, you don't want to miss anything. But it's like, OK, I yeah. kinda, that's enough of the artfulness. So I learned something from that. Like people want information. You know, real quick, back to Victor Wooten for one second. You, re you reminded me that, <clears throat> excuse me, when I first got an iPhone, I want to say, in 2008 whichever generation or you remember the year i do i do i remember Why? It was, i because it was the year that we were doing the ginger baker tribute uh, in london and i remember getting the iphone that summer or fall and going to london with it you know like in uh, you know august or september and for the first time having no issues whatsoever remember in the old days when you go to europe and you had to, there were, I, I felt like you had to, you know, hold your phone up to the sky and have the gods bless it to make the you internet work. London. Did you, <laughs> did you have the same thing? Cause I took mine to London when I first got it and I'm showing it off. And my, my, my bill, my internet connect bill, cause I was using the you know, wireless. Yeah. Was hundreds of dollars. It was crazy. I, I, the company paid for it. It was, but I remember that we <laughs> then got on a, we then got on a data plan for international because I was going there so much into Europe and using, it was still kind of a new thing to be using a yeah. wireless oh. device at that time. You know, I had the Blackberry, but, and that was always, it, you know, it, it was hit or miss with it. I'd get there and it would work perfectly or other times I'd have to keep turning it on and off to get it to find the satellite, but the iPhone worked perfectly. But anyway, it was that year. And I remember at the Montreal Drum Fest, I think it was that same year, I was having dinner. Dennis Chambers played, and Victor, him and Victor played together. And, and uh, we were having dinner at that uh, Italian restaurant we probably went to. I was, I was there, too, that year, wasn't I? You were there that year with Alex. Was that, that the year you were with Alex? I think, yeah, I think so, because I've seen to remember Dennis was there with Victor. Yeah. And then I think JoJo also showed up. That uh, sounds right. I remember we went to dinner at a, at a place way across town with Alex, you, me, yep. Vic. Yep, Italian place. I think place. Jules. Yeah, Italian place. But yeah. I'm sitting there, and, and Victor was an absolute genius whiz with the iPhone. Like, you know, showing me, and back then, it, you know, compared to what you can do with it now, it was nothing. But he's, like, showing me how to, I forget, but, like, with, you know, you can change the font style with this, and you can do this with it. And I'm like, wow. You know, I had oh, no yeah. idea. But yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. He's he's smart. He investigates stuff, and if if he gets if he touches something, he wants to get like. He wants yeah. to really get to know it and to know it. Yeah. And I was astonished at, at what he was telling me, but the manner that, uh, and I thought, boy, yeah, Berkeley's, yeah, you know, it's it's great school, great facilities, yeah, uh, wonderful magnet. Um, you know, I mean, a lot of great schools. Uh, Joe LaBarbera is teaching at Cal Arts. I think that's a, f a phenomenal school. A lot of the state colleges in California are good. I'm I'm proud of what we got going at at the Thornton School of Music at USC. Yeah. Um, you know, we're all everyone's doing their best, and and very much so the students 
as well as administrators supporting us. But, you know, this lockdown hasn't been easy for, for anybody. Um, no. And uh, just we all got to just find the the silver linings, you know. And like I said at the beginning of this, John, I think it, it actually, I think it saved, literally has saved my life. Um, and sure, you know, I can't begin to describe the, the financial uh, loss impact. Um, and I better yeah. stop ordering all this crap from Amazon because I'm not going to have any money. <laughs> 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 but that said, it's it's been pretty cool, you know. Yeah. Fun, yeah, fun I'll stuff. just. I'll, I'll, oh, I'll, wait, wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. I was just going to say, I don't miss traveling. I really don't. Not. I mean, I I do and I don't. But I. Oh, let's see what you got there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My new snare drum. Fantastic. How does it sound? Man. Does it sound good? It sounds beautiful. Yeah. Four and a half inches by 14. Spruce and maple. Okay. Reinforcing ring on the top, not on the bottom. Got that inspiration from Bob Becker and Bill Platt. Stick saver hoops, eight lugs. My favorite strainer of Thomas, this guy right here. Yeah. And I don't know if I'm supposed to mention the price, um, <clears throat> but even though it's a signature drum, the priority all along is that this has to be affordable so everyone can get a jazz snare as part of their setup. Responsive, delicate, you know, yeah. take care of all those those kind of snare needs. Excuse me. Um, oh yeah, the, my. One little detail I really like the uh, for the air vent we have a uh, got a little wood grommet there. I love that. Yeah, isn't that nice? Um, the wood is beautiful. Yeah, the wood, it's just gorgeous, and wow. and it's made in Japan. And you won't believe the price. It's 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 below that price point that you like think this is what a. And for a signature snare drum, it's it's outrageously because my other signature drum, the smaller one, was outrageously expensive. <laughs> uh, stave drum, it's incredible. It's a great great yeah. instrument, but but this is, um, how should I put it? I mean, this is this is like Tesla performance at at a uh, Prius price. At, at, yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's, I was going to say Ford Pinto, but that's another way don't want to <laughs> I mean, is it is it in the? I had a Ford. Yeah, my sister had. Is, by the way, Sherry Rubin says Peter can play any instrument, and it sounds amazing. No, it, I I have to play my snare drum. That's right, and even better. <laughs> is it is it in like the retailing under a thousand dollar kind of price range? Oh, way by half. By half. By half. That blows my mind. It blows my mind too, and it it blew my mind because and it blew their mind when I brought it up, and they were like, "Really?" I said, "Yep." I said, "Otherwise, not interested." And they figured out how to do it. Wow. I, I it, and that was the same thing with the, you know, I mean, this is a signature. The symbol stand, the, the, yeah. the hard, the symbol stands were, were not signature, but the, that was the deal. I said, "I will, I will, I will, uh, I will go to Tama if you promise to make this symbol stand." Right. You have to make this, and boy, did they make it. Because I wanted, you know, that, I mean, not to go into messy history of it, but that, that was that was the main reason I left Yamaha kind of in a, in a snit. Uh, because, uh, uh, you know, remember the old, uh, you know, I sat down to play piano and everyone laughed. Uh, I, I sat down at the R&D meeting and brought up a f flat bass cymbal stand, and everybody laughed. Um, uh, and, and so Tama was like, yeah, we'll make it. And they even let me pick the font on the packaging. And and I tried to make it. I mean, I didn't want to copy the old Ludwig, you know, whatever. So I, uh, 
actually the font is it's a copy of the old Sony font that was mm-hmm. called Clarendon. Uh, but right. I, f- I felt that spoke 1960s and, and they, they, they chose a color that was like this very 1960s thing. So the whole experience and, you know, I'll tell you, I, I still I was I was at school going through some old hardware uh, just yesterday and in, 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 as we're you know setting up for this. Uh, uh, there we are. Uh, the Wait, wait, wait. You know, this lesson pod. Um, that cool. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, and uh, some of this hardware, uh, which is so unpleasant to the touch. You know, the, 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 the way the, 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 the plating of the metal mm-hmm. and and and, um, you know, I, just everything about these drums. I, I love these drums. I I. Uh, Let's see. I uh, there's my uh, overhead. It it's a incredible. it's a ten inch ten inch deep bass drum. I use it for all my recording work because in this, I'll show you my room. Uh, there's my uh, marimba, and that's my old Steve Maxwell Rogers drum set. I got some acoustic treatment and stuff. Piano over there, but you know it's not it's not a large room. It's a two car garage basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and the smaller depth bass drum just really seems to work well in here. Sounds that's their that's their uh, uh, I think they, what they call the Neo Mod kit. Uh, anyway, yeah. so uh, they're just they're they're great people and their design team and the artist artist rep team. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm guys. just I'm 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 set, mm-hmm. man. I got I got all the symbols I want, sticks, drum heads. Uh, you know, I don't go through drum heads that often. I don't go through sticks that often. Um, and I got all the symbols I want. Although I did, I did get, I did ask for a new flat ride. I'm going to try try this puppy out. Is that a prototype? K. No, it's a no. K. It's a, it's a K flat. Light, light flat. Kind of interesting. Oh. I, I, I yeah. think I, I like the the other K. It's a little thicker. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is interesting. I mean, it definitely has a, a more complex kind of. Uh, tonal profile, or whatever you want to call it. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, everyone, you know, stay well. Keep wearing the masks. We're we're not around the corner yet, but with with the with the with the miracle of science and the new management in charge at the top, and and people getting vaccinated, and if we all pitch in we can we can beat this thing or at least yep. coexist yeah better. absolutely yep I'm, I'm getting my first shot on monday i don't know if i told you that pete but yeah i i, um. I caught it on on the intro and and uh, yeah and whatever whatever shot it is it's a winner i agree uh j and j would be great because you only need to get one yeah that would be ideal uh, but but i'm fine if i have to come back and you yeah. know yeah we're we're pfizer we we're uh uh, we're about a month uh, past our, our 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 second dose of the Pfizer, and um, it's good. It's nice. Yeah. You know, I yeah. actually can have lunch with my kids again. I know. Imagine that. Just little things like that. I'm so looking forward to just yes. Let alone other things like playing music with our friends. But I'll start and with I, lunch and and grandkids and yeah. I'm great. I'm going to join the grand uh, granddad club, John. In, a, in a two or three weeks, I think. Okay, you know, I've been meaning to ask you about that. Wow, I can't wait well, to get to hear the news. I looked apart, so now I'm going to act the part. <laughs> oh, you're going to love it. You guys are going to love it. You just I can't wait, can't wait. Yeah. I'm so excited, and uh, it's going to be Maya's baby son and uh, uh, father. We love him. He's great. Uh, so we're just we're really thrilled and that's all i'll say about that okay that's exciting news all right well Pete, I should, hang with I've, me. i've gone on for too long i apologize no this is i'm so glad you 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 wanted to stay this long you know i'm always aware of the time and i didn't want you to but you know we could keep going if you want <laughs> no i'm hungry and i'm sure everyone else is either hungry or they've got better things to do 
<laughs> All right. Well, hang with me for one second, Pete, and I'll 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 come back to you in the room. I'm gonna All just right. end the stream in a second. Um, but everybody, Bye, thanks everyone. for watching. Yeah, big hand for Peter Erskine, my dear friend who I miss. But this this is the next best thing. And uh and don't forget to join me this Wednesday with Jim Catalano. And I forgot to mention at the setup. I, I recently um, connected with Liberty DeVito and, and Peter reminded me when he was talking about Billy Joel earlier uh, on April 10th, Saturday, April 10th, I'll have Liberty DeVito uh, with me. So live from the drum room. So that'll be exciting. All right. See you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching. Um, this has been a great hang with my buddy and I'll see you soon. Thanks. <laughs>